Okay, so what I'd like to do in this video is show you how to use Minitab Express in the TI Graphing Calculator to work um, a bunch of pieces to this model problem that I posted in Blackboard. So this um, question deals with marketing, um, a marketing executive and you know the relationship that exists between sales of their product and the advertising costs. So we have a table down here, and as you can see, it, it runs for a year, and uh, it shows you you know, in thousands of dollars, how much they spent on advertising, and then the corresponding sales that came out from, you know, spending that much money on advertising. Uh, so it goes through and lists out these values for the for the year, obviously. So let's look at letter A. Um, it says, use your calculator, or Minitab Express, is, of course, you can use that as well, to make a scatter plot that shows how advertising uh, explain sales. All right, so this asks you a few different things. It asks you if there does there appear to be a linear relationship. Then it asks you to find the Pearson sample correlation coefficient r, and what does this r tell you about the strengths? There's a bunch of questions in Part A. So let's work on uh, each piece one at a time here. Let's look at this first one. It says use your calculator or mini tab, of course. Uh, to create the scatter plot. So let's just go ahead and do that. So what I've done is I've taken the advertising dollars here. There's 12 entries as you can see. And then their corresponding sales. And in Minitab, I've put them in here. So here's the 12 values for advertising and sales. So once you have those in there, and be careful. Remember this first row right here that doesn't have a label. You see the one starts here. This is uh, actually the you know the title that you want to give each uh, column. So it's, be careful you don't accidentally put the um, you know the first data point uh, up here. So a um, bunch of ways you can create the graph in Minitab. Um, you can just go to the Graphs tab right here and click on that. And here's the Scatter Plot option. It's pretty straightforward. Click on Scatter Plot and just click the simple Scatter Plot. I will also try to use this uh, with regression option here. And the, the, with groups would be if the, you were graphing um, multiple scenarios, maybe sales in year one, sales in year two, and then you would group that data according to, you know, uh, year or what have you. But I'll choose a simple one. So what happens here is it comes up with, you know, what are you giving me? You know, where, where's my data? In other words, it's asking you. So it tells you here over here in the um, question what to use. It says X represents advertising dollars. Okay, so in other words, the advertising is the X values, and Y represents sales. All right, so when we go over here, we just want to make sure that we uh, choose the correct uh, variables to go in their spots here. So it's a, it's right now it says the Y variable. Notice it's blinking right here. So the Y variable, and obviously that's sales. So I'll go to sales here and double click it. It'll throw it in there. And then the X variable is the advertising. So I'll click that. And really, there's nothing else to do. What it's going to do is it's going to fit that in a scatter plot and graph it for us. So I'll say OK. And there you have it. Here's your scatter plot. So, in other words, these are just coordinates in space, x, comma, y. Pretty straightforward here. And here's your basic scatter plot, scatter diagram, whatever you want to call it. This you know, value down here looks a little off. It would, probably would be a lot nicer if it was up here somewhere. But at the end of the day, you know, it appears that this data does have a linear trend. Um, now, is it perfectly linear? Obviously not. Um, is there some other relationship? Maybe is there a curve that would run through here? Maybe some type of curve that would fit the data better? Well, that's to be determined. Um, that's why we're you know, studying these, um, the, the residual section later on in this chapter. So if we go back here, it says, use your calculator to make a scatter plot that shows how advertising dollars explain sales. Okay, so there we have it. There it is in Minitab. I'll show you how to do it in the calculator too. It's fairly easy. Um, does there appear to be a linear relationship? Of course, as you can see, yeah, it appears that there is a linear relationship. All right, so next it says, find the Pearson sample correlation coefficient R. All right, well, remember, the correlation coefficient, what it does is it tells you how strong the relationship is. Remember, it's a scale of negative one to one. Zero being no relationship whatsoever. There's no correlation. Where one would be perfect positive correlation. As you can see, this data trend is going uphill. As we read from left to right, the data set's going uphill. So we would call that a positive linear trend or a positive correlation. Now, Minitab has a built-in feature for that. In the regression tab here, you click that regression button, the very first option says correlation. So if you click that, and it just says what's the variables. Now, it doesn't matter what you pick first or second. It's just going to grab them and correlate them using the formulas that were described in the section. 
And remember, the formulas in the section that, that crunch this, they're very tedious. And with 12 pieces of data, it would take quite some time to work this by hand. Uh, the methodology here is Pearson correlation. As you can see, there's another one called Spearman correlation. Um, that's uh, a different methodology. We're using the Pearson correlation uh, scenario. So I'll click OK here. So correlation, the Pearson correlation of advertising and sales, about 0.89, very close to the number one, obviously. Um, it's a very high positive correlation, as you can see. So um, this question here asks you, find the Pearson sample correlation coefficient R. All right, All right so we found it. It is approximately 0.89. What does R tell you about the strength of this relationship? Well, obviously, R tells you that's a strong positive correlation. Now, um, in in the textbook um, and in I think the note packet I gave you, I describe what what a weak correlation is, what a moderate cor correlation is, what a strong correlation is. You know, from both a positive and negative standpoint. You know, there's no there's no fine line that divides this and you know makes the switch happen from. Um, you know, a strong correlation to a moderate correlation. Um, but that's described in the textbook, you know, in terms of generality. But I would just classify this as a very strong correlation. Now, the same exact scenario, and the, again, don't forget the graphs section is where we created the scatter plot. The same thing could be uh, done in the TI calculator. Now, I've already took the liberty of putting the data set uh, in here. In L1 is where I put the X values, and in L2 is where I put the Y values. So if I want to play the same game and go ahead and crunch the scatter plot and display it for me, you have to access the, uh, the TI-84's statistical plotting menu. It's right here. It's above the Y equals key. So if you would second function and then Y equals, you have to turn one of these plots on. So I'm going to choose option one. Notice right now it's off. So I'll turn it on by hitting enter. It turns it on and it says type. In other words, what kind of graph you want to make. It's like going to the graphs um, menu up here in mini tab. Uh, notice how the scatter plot is already highlighted. All right, and then this is predefined already. The X list, where's your, it's, it's asking you, you know, what list did you put your X values in? All right, well I put them in L1. And what about your Y values? Well, I put them in L2. You can even choose the kind of mark you want to do. All right, so all you got to do right now is tell the calculator to go ahead and make the scatter plot for me. Now, the only problem is this little TV screen right here. It's really small for your calculator. It's not like a computer, like a mini tab, where it, it kind of knows and it, it sees the data and fits the data for you automatically. The TI calculator will fit the data in the screen for you, but you got to tell it to do that. Now, th that, that feature is called zooming. It zooms the data and, you know, zooms the window to make it fit. So that zoom feature is right here, this button, zoom. So you click zoom, and I believe you got to go to the bottom. Yeah, there it is. It's zoom number nine called zoom statistics, zoom stat. So you choose zoom nine and hit enter. And there you have the graph. Now, if you remember correctly, that graph right there, in the scatter plot here, I'll choose that simple scatter plot once again. I'll just crunch that. Um, Scatter plot. As you can see, it's the same scatter plot. Obviously, the uh, the mini tab software does a much nicer job. The thing I like, I like about the mini tab software too is if you click on the graph and hit the plus sign, you can add and remove certain options like data labels. It'll label all the coordinates for you. If you need grid lines to make it easier to read, it really does a great job. Mini tab. It has a lot of features, obviously, so you can play around with that if you'd like. But as you can see, creating a scatter plot on the, the calculator or on Minitab, it's just as easy. Now, getting the um, the correlation out of this, well, it's not it's not as um, as easy as you would think. Um, here, you have to ask the calculator to run the linear regression. Um, and, but before you do that, you first have to tell the calculator to turn on what they call the diagnostics. So, if you're a calculator guy and you want to use your calculator. Um, let me quickly uh, show you how to turn your diagnostics on. So um, the diagnostics are in the catalog, which is down here. It's above the number zero. It says catalog. So if you hit second function, option zero. Oops, sorry, hold on. Second function, option zero. Here's the catalog. Now you got to get down to the 
to the D's right here. This, and this is the catalog of every function that this calculator has. I need to get the D for diagnostics. Let me jump to the D's here. I gotta scroll down for a bit to find the diagnostics feature. Here we go. Diagnostic off, diagnostic on. The default is that it's turned off. When you use the calculator for regression, you need it turned on. And you only have to do this once. Once you turn it on, um, it'll always be on until you tell it to turn off. Even if you shut your calculator off, it still stays on. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to hit enter, choose that option. I got a zero right there, so let me uh, get that zero out of my way. So diagnostic on, you hit enter, and it just says done. Now this is, you only need to do this once. And the, the point of doing this is that it tells the calculator to give you all the special regression uh, results. All right, so now how do you actually go ahead and um, you know, calculate the regression? Well, that's done in the stat menu. So if you hit stat and move over to calc, and here it is, linear regression, it's option number four. So you choose option four, and you hit enter. And there you have that R value. There it is, R equals 0.89. Now it gives you some other information, obviously. This other information is the regression equation. And obviously you should have read the chapter so you know what that stuff's all about. But in this video, I'm just trying to show you how to grab the correlation, the R value, and get the scatter plot. So remember over here what we did in mini tab to get the correlation was we went to the regression tab, selected correlation, dumped the two variables in there, and it crunched the correlation for us. This thing's giving me a little spinny, obviously. So the, the point is getting the correlation coefficient in the TI calculator or getting it in Minitab, it's just as easy. It really is. There's not much to it. Um, the calculator, I believe, you know, obviously takes a couple more minutes, but it's not the end of the world. It's just a matter of, um, you know, being, being patient with it. And once you set it up once, there's not much to talk about here. It's that whole diagnostics feature. So once you have that thing set up, um, all you really have to do is run the regression. And I'll show you how to get the same regression results that are here in the calculator in Minitab as well. But we'll play that in another video. All right, so 